about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushed in. He fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, Believe on the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. He spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds, and he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. The Word of God for the people of God. I know this never happened in any of your families, but we had a family in one of my churches that had, had a war. Right? And the war was such a war between brothers and sisters and all of that that uh, Larry and Beverly left their church and came to our church because they couldn't go to church with the rest of the family anymore. It was tough. It was hard. And the church they were going to was a church where women didn't have a place to play in the church. You know what I'm talking about, right? Where women might get to teach children in Sunday school, but beyond that, that was it. Well, they came to our church. They fell in love with our church. The war got over in their family, and they stayed in our church. One day, the class, Beverly looked at me, and she said, after class, is that children's position still open for the children's director? And I said, yeah. Well, can I apply for it? And I said, yes. Yes, you can. But, but Beverly, you've not done anything educationally since high school. I think you need to go finish your education. She said, that's what it takes. That's what I do. So she became the part-time children's minister at the church. And she went to Harvard on the Hill, known as PJC, Paris Junior College. <laughs> and by God, by God, she graduated with honors. This is a woman in her 40s. She... Uh, she had done two different jobs her entire life to that point, and both of them honorable jobs and great jobs, but she had kept children in the home, and she was a receptionist at a eye doctor's clinic. Those were her two jobs. And all of a sudden, at the age of 40, her daughter in middle school, she's gone back to college. She goes to Texas A&M. Commerce, right? Not the other one down at College Station, the South Campus, you know, down at College Station. She went to Texas and said, yeah, right? Here you go. And she, uh, she graduated with commerce. About the middle of that commerce time, she stands in the door of my office one day, and she says, I don't think children's ministry is going to be enough for me. I think God's calling me to ordain. Can we go talk to the district superintendent? I said, I'm sure, Beverly, let's go. So we did. We drove all the way. She was a candidate for morning ministry, a certified candidate. She did all the things she was supposed to do. And then by God, by God, she went to Perkins School of Theology. Commuted from Paris, Texas to Perkins School of Theology. Do you think she wanted it or what? And she graduated with And now she's a pastor in the East District in North Texas and the Conference. Amazing, isn't it? Isn't it amazing how sometimes we get tossed out? 
We get told there are restrictions on our lives and we can't do. And all the external things say no, 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 no. And then we find ourselves in a place where God ends up wanting us to be and all of a sudden the walls come down and freedom comes interiorly. And for Beverly Olson, that meant everything opened up. All things work for good, right? There you go. I didn't have to tell us that. And you're called according to his parts. Now, the scripture is much like that story in that Paul and Silas go into town and they're followed around by this young girl. And she follows them around the entire day and she keeps saying, you are prophets of the Most High, the Most High God, you, 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 you know, Jesus. And she just kept doing all this stuff, Jesus this, Jesus that. And, and finally Paul got tired of her saying all of this. And like a man, right, turns around and I get the feeling, heals her not because he wants her to be well, but because he's irritated with her. Now, isn't that amazing? And he tells the demon in her to come out. And then they get in trouble because she's a moneymaker because of the demon that's in her for her owners who use her to tell the future and people pay them money for her to tell them the future. And what happens to Paul and Silas? They get tossed in jail for healing somebody. Sounds pretty normal, doesn't it? Come on. <clears throat> and while they're in jail that night, an earthquake comes and their chains fall off and the doors are all open and the jail is going to kill itself. You remember the story, don't you? It's really. And Paul says, don't hurt yourself. We're not going anywhere. It's almost like he's saying, we are free. We were free when the chains were on. We were free when the doors were closed. And to me, this is a story about freedom. And it's a story about who's free. Paul's free, that's obvious, but he's in jail. He's free and in jail. The jailer's not free and he's not in jail. Isn't that amazing? And here's what I figured. There are external freedoms, right? And there are internal freedoms. The external freedoms how many of us are glad there aren't blue laws anymore, right? I mean, come on. Some of y'all don't know what blue laws are, but, you know, you could buy eggs and butter and milk, but you couldn't buy a pan and a spatula to cook them in, right? On Sunday. It was interesting. But blue laws were external restrictions to keep us, as, to make us be Christians. Even though we weren't. Some of us were, some of us were. But did the external restrictions make us into Christians? No. They didn't work. There are external freedoms, and believe me, friends, I am one of the most grateful human beings in the world for the freedoms we have in our country. Amen? But those freedoms don't make us free. Those freedoms are not what makes us free. Not at all. What makes us free is what happens inside. Not what's going on outside. Because I can look free, but that doesn't mean I'm free. Come on, how many of y'all got a pay electric bill? Feel free of that, do I? How many got, you know, how many of you got to make sure you make the mortgage? You mean, come on, I mean, how many of you got something to do in the morning? On your schedule, right? Got to be somewhere, do something, right? How many of you, not some of you are retired and your life is more scheduled than mine. I understand that. We have stuff that pulls on us all the time. I told Kathy early on in ministry that sometimes I felt like a little flag on the tug of war road. People yanking me this way and that way, trying to get me here and get me there and tell me what my life ought to be like. Any of y'all feel like the little flag on the tug of war road sometimes? <laughs> Getting yanked around. Not really free. 
in here. And isn't that what the jailer wants? What must I do to be saved, sirs? It's interesting. We think of that phrase as, how do I get saved? How do I get to go to heaven? How do I get right with Jesus, right? Remember, the, the jailer doesn't even know who Jesus is. This is not a Christian question. This is, how do I get out of this situation now that the doors are open and I'm, I'm responsible? How do I get saved from this situation I'm in? And Paul hears it as a Christian question. Just believe in Jesus. You'll be okay. And isn't that the way people come to us? How does my life get okay? And the truth of the matter is, believe in Jesus. Because the externals aren't as important as what's going on inside. Never have been, never will be. If you really want to be free, let Jesus set you free. Let that happen. That's where the freedom comes. That's where you can sit in the jail cell and sing hymns and uh, pray. And be grateful that you get to be in a place where there's somebody that will listen to you whether they want to or not. Be grateful for the places where we find ourselves. Just like, just like Beverly did. She found herself ostracized and in the midst of that, God gave her a new home. Sometimes we think things aren't working because we haven't let God have it yet. But when we do, that's when everything opens up. As you can tell, this is all saints someday. Somewhere in here, I've got a device. Cool, isn't it? You <coughs> turn it on here. You turn your job. <laughs> just, just pushing your button. You find it, don't push that, don't push that. Yep. Okay, you ready for this? This is a message that I recorded with one of our saints before she died. Can you hear that? something, the internal does something for us that we can't even imagine. This is all sense. Every time we receive communion, all the saints are with us. Russ is here today, Patty. And Tommy. They're all with us. When we come down, and we feel a bump on either side, you know, I guarantee it's going to be Francis or, or Goldine or, or one of the saints. We may have to go by years. They're all here, aren't they? And not just the ones who have been, the ones who are us and all those who will be. Isn't it kind of mind-blowing to think that our great 
great, 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 and gone down grandchildren are already with us in the Lord. Isn't that amazing? All the saints. God is timeless. All the saints. We're here. Right there. Why are they here? Because Jesus is here. Because Jesus does something in us that we can't pull off out here. But as Jesus comes and touches us and makes us who we are, something big happens. And we are free. And we become bigger inside. Beverly's dad uh, made all the landings. He was a landing craft operator in the Navy. He made all the landings in, in, in the Eastern Island Hopping Campaign in World War II. He came home lucky to be alive, right? And he had the coolest pair of glasses I've ever seen in my life. He was a mechanic, so his glasses were upside down. He had the little, the, 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 the far-sighted stuff on top because he was always looking up, right? Trying to repair something. I thought those were the neatest glasses. I'm going to get me some someday. <laughs> Wonderful. But he was in that church, remember? And, and it's a good church. I don't want to berate him too much. When he died, the pastor wouldn't let Beverly help officiate her own father's funeral. I wasn't there anymore, so it wasn't my job to tell him off, but my predecessor, Bert Palmer, told him off big time. But not Beverly. But not Beverly. You see, Beverly was free. And she didn't take advantage of that time. She was gracious, and she got bigger in her five foot one inch frame. She was kind. She held herself firm. And she told the pastor how much she appreciated him and the service that he did. And I watched this little woman do what Paul and Silas did. Don't hurt yourself over me. Let it go. Let it go. And as I sat back in the congregation as a pastor passed, I was so proud. I was so proud of her not trying to put chains on him. Aren't you? Freedom isn't easy. When the time comes, I pray I'm able to make a voice recording on Francis. And when the time comes in my life when I'm not exactly getting the right kind of shake in life, I'm hoping I'm as big as a family. And it's only times like these when Jesus reminds me. The only way you'll pull that off if you're gone. The only way you'll pull that off, person in this church green prairie, the only way is to let me be me in us. Right? That's what Jesus wants us to know. Be free. And this one do. This one. Let us pray. 
Precious Lord, I give you thanks for all the saints. And thank you for letting us be saints today. To kneel at your table, to hold down our hands, and to be blessed. Come, Holy Spirit, come and bind our hearts together and set us free. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.